YouTube, it's Brian Phillips here coming to you again with a review. Finally, a calm, sunny afternoon, Father's Day special. We've got the 787, also known as the QF008, and we've got the A120, which is uh, it's a XK product, and it is known as the Airbus A380, and they are both really amazing products for the money. Uh, both come ready to fly. This one you have to assemble, but it comes with two 300 milliamp one ash packs. Uh, just wanted to show you the difference between the two. I kept talking about how similar these are. Like this is so similar to an XK product as this one. And um, I did some research and found out that you can pretty much bind them both to this. So we might use this radio and then we can eliminate the batteries out of this because these little things get tedious. There's a million of them uh, when you start getting into more of these airplanes. And I like the size of the XK product lineup better. I actually personally think that the 787 is pretty awesome. It seems to look, I don't know, just, just slightly more scale than the 380. But I also have some mods I want to do to both of these. And I have another one coming up here pretty soon. As soon as it arrives, we'll do a review on it. But for now, I wanted to give you guys a more fair assessment of flight characteristics. Remember, the 787 has to be assembled. Kind of a pain in the butt. Yesterday, we lost a gear on the touch and go. And that's why we popped a prop off, uh, prop and motor and the whole assembly. So we're going to do this again today, except we're not going to screw it up. So you've already seen it with the regular radio. We're going to basically turn on the radio system, the XK one. We're going to plug in our battery. Then we'll go ahead and power this on. Except we did that in the wrong order, guys. I'm so used to these good habits that I've made on, on certain stuff. One of those is making sure that you do things in the right order. Also, you can flip your planes over if there's little gusts of wind, you won't lose them over the edge of your truck. Okay, so I turned on this radio. This is the XK model. Kind of hard to see in the sun. So we've got this on. Now we're gonna turn this on. Throttle up, throttle down, throttle up. There it is. Pretty cool. So now we're using the XK controller and let's just make sure everything goes the right direction. So real quick, we'll put it on the ground. Yaw, yaw, throttle, elevator up and down. So we should be good. So let's taxi it out. We'll start with 787. Wind is coming very, very lightly from that direction. So we'll just taxi out to the main runway and then take off into the wind. Oh, gorgeous. So far, so good. Really nice and docile. A little bit touchy on the elevator, which is something I noticed yesterday too in the extreme wind conditions. That's full throttle. That's full up, that's full down. That's full left. It has to depend on the dihedral and the differential thrust to actually make it fly. I like that the gear disappear when you're flying. You can hardly tell they're there and they're kind of ugly, but it's nice to have them. Okay, let's walk over here by the edge. Really have to be on the elevator controls. Um, let me demonstrate for you. I'm gonna go into the wind here. Okay, so this is, this is all I'm doing. I'm just kind of, just kind of using my throttle to engage the turns a little sharper. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm not really doing much. You pretty much just give it full input and it does what it needs to do. And when you let go of the sticks, it levels the plane. So it just flies in a straight line, which is nice. A little bit of down. You could possibly fix that with trim, except I don't know that there is trim on these things. You know, it'd be kind of cool is if you could just make a longer lever for the elevator control horns, you would resolve one of the biggest issues this plane has. And that is the hypersensitivity of the elevator. Ooh. 
And I don't think we're gonna go for any flight time records today just because I wanna try to show you both of these planes. See, if you give it throttle and you've got the full stick input, you can get it to kind of turn in sharp. But then coming out of it, you see, if you really wanna fly in a tight space, it's challenging because you don't have the aid of a rudder. It's about 50% throttle there. 30%, 15%, 0%. Okay, let's block to the runway, huh? Sure looks nice when it's flying too. Man, if I had just 25% better control, I would be satisfied with this. Whoa, <laughs> must have uh, worked with the wind abrupt. there. It's just such a pretty plane. I really like the way it looks. But anybody who's ever seen my channel knows I like doing flaps and LEDs and all these different modifications. You get into these really small light planes, not much room for those accessories. And by the way, you might say, well, why are you so twitchy on your controls? Well, that's, there's no expo or anything, guys. That's, it's just, you get what you get. It's all built in. And it's not totally calm. Yeah, I would it's say we have about a four breeze. mile an hour wind right now. And when I say four, I mean gusting from two to four. So if you had a flag out, the flag would barely be kicking up. That's full throttle there. Pretty impressive for like 50 bucks. And honestly, guys, you can't get an airplane for less than that. I mean, that's so cheap. I wish it wasn't that way, but it just, it kind of is. You can get those little cheapy quads. You can get those cheaper. There's just so many of them. That was a little scary. I couldn't get it to turn any sharper next to the house. So if you get into a tight spot, I'll show you how to fix this. Okay, full rudder. And you see it'll tip on itself and then it turns sharp. See if you're gliding, that elevator is gonna help you with your control authority. And you use that elevator to help you complete the turn. Really pretty though. Okay, we're gonna try to land it here. Okay. This is where it's really challenging, guys, because you think it'd be no big deal, but to be honest, you don't have any yaw authority. That looks pretty stinking good, actually. Mm -hmm. Let's try it again the other way. And that, that honestly, it doesn't get a whole lot better on this plane. Ooh. Let's see how it fared. The other thing I can say about these planes is that they are extremely durable. Um, the EP, I believe it's EPO, it's just super forgiving. I mean, look at that. That's how you get that awesome flex in flight, which looks super realistic. Let's pull the gear and then we'll do that flight. And guys, I promise you, we're going to get you both of these flights on here today. Um, in terms of getting these gear out, let's go where we can lay down the controller. I don't want to rip out the housing that receives the gear. But honestly, if you knew you weren't going to fly with it, you could take it out. And then the other XK products that I've gotten in the past, like they came with a 500 milliamp. And then this is a 700 milliamp. They're all one ass packs. I'm certain that this plane would, it would be able to fly with those bigger packs if you could get them to fit in there. It's a little bit tempting to throw a bigger pack in there just to see if the plane flies heavier. I think it would, it would actually stand to use a little bit extra weight. Um, you know, these airliners, I think I got a little CA in there. Man, look how gorgeous that looks. Okay, just a really gentle breeze coming this way. Into the throttle, just a hair. Oh man, that looks so good without the gear. Don't have to worry about landing it either. That's about 50% stick input on the uh, left turn. Let's go for a right turn. The differential thrust is okay and dead calm. Boy, that looks good up against the green, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. 
What a gorgeous plane. And there isn't any trim adjustment on this, is there? Okay, coming down here. Man, that is gorgeous. You know, and anybody familiar with differential thrust, you know, you get your delta rays and things like this. Man, that thing looks good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. The dihedral is perfect. I mean, in scale appearance, I would give it a nine for being, you know, the price point. Ooh, that's full up elevator right there. <laughs> and we're using the XK controller here just to show you that it'll work. We'll use the XK control on the 380 next. On the A120 is what they call that. Okay, bring it in for a landing in the grass. Very good. Very good. Well, guys, that could go for a while longer. I mean, they quote like a 12-minute flight time on this thing, and I don't doubt it for a second. So let's go ahead and re-gear. Um, we'll set up the A380. We'll do wheels up, wheels down, and then we'll do it with the gear out as well. Okay, just to show you guys how this is going to work, um, it's in the off condition on the switch here. This one has a tag. And that's one thing that's annoying about these planes. If you drop your lead down in there, grab one of your landing gear, you can pull it out with that. Um, obviously all these warning labels are just dead weight. There's, this is, I labeled my batteries just so that I could remember which one came with which, but they're the same packs. They're the same low C connectors um, and you can definitely use them interchangeably provided you haven't damaged them. Um, in fact, again, with this plane, I think the same thing, you could probably get away with a bigger pack, like a 500 milliamp hour pack and uh, you'd be able to have a longer flight time and a little bit weightier looking flight, which might actually help calm this plane down. Um, just feeling a little bit extra wind over my shoulder. Okay, so we're gonna use the same exact controller. This one says A380 with a black marker on the back. Um, I mean, I could, I could show you on this one too, but we're just gonna show you on the XK because they're the same. It's pretty, pretty well demonstrated. Okay, so we're gonna turn this on first, wait for the flashing light and then turn this on. And then once that comes on, we can go ahead and all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down. And then, okay, so we'll see if this starts working here. I don't know if I've got this. Oh, there we go. Up, down. There we go. Okay. So, differential thrust and elevator. Let's make sure we're going the right direction with our controls. We should be. Yep. Yep. I love that you can pivot this plane like that. I think there's just slightly better motors on this A380, also known as the A120. Okay. Oh, beautiful, almost scale takeoff. Man, that thing looks good in the air, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Man, in the dead calm, she flies good. Kind of screaming right now we got a little bit of crosswind there let's bring it down below the trees i would say the wind is picked up by one or two miles an hour so we're looking at a four to five mile an hour wind and now we're down to about two okay go on the whoa <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of weird. I need just a, a hair of trim up. Look at that. Look at that gorgeous. I think we should just jump straight into taking the landing gear out after we take two landings. Because okay. this thing flies almost identically. Big difference, folks. You don't have to build this. It does seem a little bit more refined in its controls. What do you think? It From... sounds a little bit different too. Different props. Yeah. But it sounds not as cheap. It's a little more powerful too. Yeah. But there again, you've got four motors or four faux engine nacelles creating more drag. But I mean, can you argue with how cool it looks? I mean, those landing gear definitely don't look cool. They look hokey as all get out. Yeah. 
That's full throttle. You can do that same trick. Just gliding now. Seems to glide a little better. It seems a little smoother. Is it, it is just ever so slightly smoother, but it's dead calm right now for a second. Okay, we'll try to take a landing here since it's calm. It's it's challenging to land these planes, I gotta say. I mean, you wouldn't think it'd be hard, but it just kind of is because you don't have that level of control and authority that I desire. It makes me want to go get my A380 out. My Ting Shung. Ting Chong! A little high alpha <laughs> for you. I'm sure if I got that high alpha right when my wheels were going down. Right in front. Now that is not a full, uh, full crank turn. Sorry about the sun, folks. Let's do a full stop landing here. And then we'll go ahead and switch out, take the gear off, see how it handles. I apologize, guys, for not getting a, a, a video quicker to demonstrate this plane's capabilities. I mean, as you can see in the dead calm, it's definitely flyable. Um, obviously, no throttle cut, so you want to be careful you don't get anything you want to keep. Attach your body in those props. Not that I honestly think you would lose anything. But you might get like a paper cut and get mad and throw the plane <laughs> and your wife would stomp on it. Would never do that. She wouldn't do it. Okay. All right, guys. So we'll just uh, try the same exact experience. You want to step over here and then that sun will be far yep. away. Thing I like about it too is look how wide the, the stance is on those. You don't have to worry about hitting your thumbs while you're hand launching this one. Oh, it's gorgeous. Kind of launched that in the wind, guys. I would say four mile an hour headwind. 60% throttle here. This thing is, it's fun to fly. It's not hard. Is it harder than something with more control authority? Yes, because you're kind of giving it a suggestion. Like, I want to turn left. Okay. Okay, I'll turn left. Look at that. Gorgeous. And you know me, I like to fly close to stuff. And as a result, you kind of need the finite control. But I mean, it's really not too bad on a calm day. I mean, dead calm day. Like Sport Cub S UMX calm day. But would I recommend this to a beginner? For the money, it's tempting. Would I recommend the 787 to a beginner? Only if you have the glue, because you need to be able to put the thing together. And to be honest with you, if it's a ready to fly, really the thing ought to be coming with glue. And you know, I can just see some poor kid getting on Christmas morning or, you know, like some strange Father's Day father to son gift and then they're not gonna have the, the glue. And it's just gonna be a big disappointment. You don't want disappointments in RC, guys. There's enough of those in the crashing realm of things. <laughs> Man, that looks gorgeous, doesn't it? Yeah. The nice thing, if you're doing it for a kid, a beginner, is it comes with the radio and stuff. Yeah, it's so you're ready not to fly. investing in the whole well, expense of it. But the thing is, though, if you get the Sport Cub S or like a Delta Ray One or you know one of these other choices, you're gonna get an easier flying plane that's gonna be a better platform, more repairable. You can get parts for these things. And yes, they are sweet looking, but I'm 
I'm not like a super skilled pilot, but I would say that I'm qualified to fly most of these planes. And if you get somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, it's gonna be a challenge, it's gonna be more frustrating, and you're gonna to need to take advantage of the EPO. The EPO that's very forgiving, I might add. Okay, I'm going overhead this time. Gosh, I love the way that looks. And then this plane has those hokey black marks over the nacelles. Don't like that, don't like the black props. But I could put the props from the A780 on here. Did this one come with spare props? It did, came with spare props. It did not come with a spare prop puller, or a prop puller rather, whereas the 780 did. The 780 is actually a more complete airplane because of that. But this one came with a better dual charger, did it? Or wait, did this come with a single or a dual? I can't Cannot remember. remember. Sorry, folks. But this one was actually also ready to fly. It was ready to fly and actually ready to fly. We only had to put one screw in and assemble the wing, if you recall. I mean, I wouldn't have done that two days ago. Or, excuse me, yesterday. Which, right. by the way, I don't know if I told you guys this. I don't know how I would have. I would have had to have my soothsayer suit on. But about 15 to 20 minutes after we filmed our video yesterday, ooh, that's what happens when the battery dies. Hmm. So, we'll pause it and I'll, well, I'll just go grab it. So guys, I mean, I flew that plane and I don't know if it, it was like a low voltage warning or something else. Let's see what happened. Oh, there it is. It must be like a low voltage warning. One thing I can tell you from experience is that low voltage warnings, they need to actually be a warning. If you don't have any clue it's coming, the next thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to set a timer. And when I say a timer, there is not a timer regrettably on these controllers. So use your cell phone, have somebody holler at you when it's at five minutes or six or whatever you, you figure is gonna work out. Um, flying with a 300 milliamp 1S pack, if you're getting 10 minutes, you've got a good plane. I mean, it's fun to fly for 10 minutes and you might think, well, that doesn't seem like very long. When you're learning to fly, 10 minutes of fly time is a good fly time. So with that being said, guys, these planes are both awesome choices. I hope you'll follow the links and buy one for yourself. They're both good investments. They're really fun if you know how to fly and if you're just learning to fly, it's probably worth the risk. And that's the way I'm gonna put it. That's my final call. And I think you should still get one because they are really fun. And when I have a chance, I'm gonna do some modifications and they're gonna be really cool. And I know you guys are gonna wanna see what's going on. So come back for more. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting us through this. Uh, happy Father's Day to you fathers out there and we'll see you on the next one.